Hello, everybody. This is Crunchy speaking with his poorly voice. I hope you can hear me all right. What we're going to do today is I'm going to show some of you how to set up your track hat to use in X-Plane 11 and other flight sims of your choice. I'm going to be using a track hat, as I say, which is this here on my desktop. It seems to be version 1.2 P7, open track. I've created a an X-Plane 11 profile here by clicking down on here and saying create a profile. But this one is a, a copy, a copy, I'm trying to say, of one that I made for uh, Eel 2 Battle of Stalingrad. And I'm hoping it's just a copy of that because that's what I intended. Right. There we are. There's the track hat on my desktop there. Obviously, we can um, check our camera now. With track hat, if you buy it from their website, you'll get um, a PS3i, which is what I've got. Now, on my screen now, you can see um, I'm wearing my hat. This is me. Unfortunately, there's a bright door behind me there, which leads into my living room, which is on the south side of the house. I suppose I could go and... Um, close the door but it wouldn't really make a lot of difference so um to check this you, obviously it's got a preview on if you turn the preview off it'll go off um it's like frozen in time there you see so if it's a preview switch it on um and then you can also um set your little filters here now it's probably best to have the gain turned down because basically you want the picture to be black but the lights to show so that the, the track hat software can see the white dots uh, and not get interfered with by any brightness because if there's too much brightness it won't be able to distinguish between the light and dark areas of course um it doesn't matter what you have the rgb on i don't think so anyway there, there's that anyway um now that if i go back to my track hat software if I press start there you can see there's three markers on the screen with their pixels now as i turn my head to the left you can see that the hat seems to move and i look up and down up and down which is all fantastic now some of some of the options that you'll have to set off for uh, centering toggling zeroing your your hat uh, which i've got bound here to start tracking shift and home stop tracking shift and delete uh, I don't have toggle on, but I could do. To zero the, the position, shift and page up. And then shift and insert. And the toggle is on. So my camera, I'll just show, I'll just, I'll just show you my settings. If I try and talk loudly, my voice goes too squeaky. Um, I'll just show you, show you there. Um, I've got automatic threshold on. And I'm thinking these are all working because the last time I used um, EEL 2 Battle of Stalingrad, they all did work. So we've got that on there. We've got the mode to 640 by 40, 75 hertz. Um, it's a track hat, which as we all know, which is the cap one and not the one with the little device on the side of the hat. Um, so in our aeroplane model, we want to do yaw, which is like turning your head left and right. You want pitch, which is making your head go up and down. Roll, which is like rolling your head side to side. Um, um, I've got a little bit of filtering on. Game detection. I suppose we could um, create another one and say this one is... Uh, where are we? Profile is X-Plane. And we can search for X-Plane in... On your on your drive, which for mine's my external drive, Steam apps, Steam apps common. Hopefully, if I scroll me wheelie down, you'll be able to see X Plane 11, and you'll see the, the application there. Very good. Anyway, there you go. There's your game detection. Now, the next most important thing, the next most important thing, is your mapping. Here are my mappings, which you will need to get the same effect that I do in the plane. Um, starting off first, we've got the yaw. Now you'll see there's a limit on the yaw, 40 degrees. This is obviously the turn of your head. You don't want to be able to whiz your head down 360 degrees because it's not realistic. But this kind of stops here at 160 degrees um, and it has a curve like this. I've got two curve points and it's so it's 
limited at 160 and at 40. The pitch, you'll see I've limited it 90 degrees, so you can only turn your head like 90 degrees, which even that is possibly a bit too much. Can it, you look up and down 90 degrees? Uh, well, yeah, 90 degrees, probably more than 90, thinking about it. So I look down the ground, that's kind of like, well, it's not zero degrees, it's about 30 to about, mm, it might be 90 degrees. But anyway, that's what I've got it set at. And there's the curve. The roll of the head, I've got it limited to uh, 140 degrees on the axis and well, about 28 degrees on the x-axis. Moving to the x, which as you know, x is moving across with. So if you want to look out your cockpit window, like you can, maybe not in X-Plane 11, you certainly can in Eel 2 Battle of Stermic. You can look outside the cockpit. So this is that. That's a... Uh, goes all the way to 100 degrees on the axis and 50 here. The Y axis is the, I'm not sure what that is, but anyway, we've got um, that limited on 50. And then uh, you can see it anyway. And on the Z, which is looking into the, um, looking into the plane with your head, like looking at the instruments, is limited to about eight on the x-axis and about 30 on the y-axis there it is right we're going to do in settings enable track ir and track pad view tracking in 3d cockpit we need to do that let's do a new flight in the cessna Let's go to, I don't suppose it matters, Gatwick, we'll see what the standard Gatwick looks like, if we can spell it. Voila. Now I've got some non-standard stuff in here, which is like that X life thing. Right, so anyway, let's go. I'm turning my head left. The plane is looking left. The plane is right. I'm looking up. I'm looking up, I'm looking down, I'm looking down. I could do with it be a bit further forward, maybe. Oh, God. Uh, that seems fine. What was the centre thing again, if I could only remember? There. Oh, that's kind of locked. There we are. That seems to work. You can also see on the screen I've got um, some uh, stuff there to view. Um, Enable, disable. We're going to disable those. Right, let's go to my settings. Uh, data output, yeah. Don't allow it to show me that, please. This is my data output, in case you want to check your FPS hardware inputs or whatever. Ah, yes, there. Get rid of that. Done. So now they won't be on the screen anymore. Right. I think I would like to put on my um, V-Sync because it's awfully teary, the screen. But if I put that on, I'm going to have to get rid of something else. So uh, take down the idea, you think? Uh, use V-Sync. Here we are. Done. Right, that looks a lot better already. Um, right, this is so easy. I'm just going to bend down now and get my joystick, guys. So watch this doesn't go totally chaotic. Right. Got the throttle off. That'd be better. I assume my throttle is connected. It is. Ah, that's better. I can even hear my own voice now. <laughs> that's good. Right, here we go. Um, now I don't... I don't have my um, Logitech G920 connected, so I can't use the um, clutch and accelerator as my, my rudder or my tail brakes. But anyway, let's give this a go. I'm going to look down, which is really good. I'm going to put on some flaps, which you'll see appear. There it was. 
behind the co-pilot steering wheel there you can actually click on these to get rid of these if you want right so that's that uh, my break is that and I'm going to some throttle remembering of course to apply some rudder I don't know why it thinks I'm leaning my head one way, and I'm not. Bit more throttle, look for the magic 60 knots, and then we can start to pull back on the stick, and we're in the air. Oh. Right, here we are. Ah, camera's now about on. Oh, I keep... <laughs> But I can't mind my own, remember my own uh, buttons. But anyway, this is it. It's not perfect, but I can look left and look right. But I think the view probably needs to be a bit more further forward. And I also am having a problem with having the thing centered. That's it. Centered is, I've got shift insert. That's it. Here, here is the um, autopilot, yeah? If we want to set a heading, say I want to continue on this heading, we rotate this with my mouse wheel. Say I want to stay on exactly the heading I'm going on. I'm rotating, because you can see the, the marker, red icon, gives it 24, coming up to the west, and now it's straight. So lock that in front, so if I go close, oh, not too close, There. And if I click on heading, it says heading. Turn on the autopilot, and it will stick with this heading. Down there. It's clone maintain 3000. So we want to do the vertical speed. Let's stay fun. Got to make sure, of course, if we're climbing. And we've got, got enough engine power. So I'll put a few more revs on. There we are. We're still in this heading. I can look round and enjoy the view. Kind of. I can look over the top. Or what? Look over the top of the glare shield, as that's called. That shields the instruments from the light. So now we've got a rate of climb of like positive four plus four we're now passing 1200 feet we're doing about 70 knots rpm rating a bit low so i'm going to turn the there uh, turn the motor up a bit i'm sure the flaps are up and that really makes it a lot easier to fly. So we're continuing to climb. We can even have a look outside using the shift and number keys. So shift and two. There we are. We're seeing to be going on kind of a little bit sideways. Shift and three is from the airport that we're registered at currently for this flight. There we go, we can have a little outside look. Moving your head, of course, doesn't make any difference to this. But you can use um, left and right mouse buttons on your mouse to rotate the view. And you can use, and use the mouse wheel to have a good look at the rivets on your aircraft. Uh, shift and five. Shift and six. Gives you a kind of out rear view. Shift and seven, we're back in here again. Shift and eight is outside. And again, you can shift and nine, takes you back in here. There you go. Now, I can even, if I want to, look right, right behind me by turning my head towards the, past the edges of my monitor. But I think this is about all right. I can move in, look at the instruments closely if I want. 
It's been, I hope that's been helpful to some people. Sorry about the voice. Um, oh, one last thing. Of course, if I wanted to turn on a head to the north now, that would be dead easy because I don't need to use the yoke or the stick. I'm just going to use this heading pointer on here and I'll set it to whoop there. Say 33. 330 degrees, I should say. And then the plane will turn to 330 degrees. There he is, just writing himself. Well, there he is. Um, what I'll do now is I think I'll come out of um, X-Plane 11 itself and show you again my track hat settings. So you can copy these and hopefully they will be exactly the same on your system and you can get the same results that I just have. Here is my options. Hope you can see that. So my center, which I should have remembered, was shift insert. My z zero. I'm not sure what the difference between shift and center and zero is, but anyway, start tracking, shift home, shift delete, toggle tracking on off. Center at start, up, I've got on the camera. I've got auto threshold on the threshold. I've got on the second pip, one pixel size. Maximum size, 20 pixel size. This is for your light dots on your, you know, on your, on your monitoring thing here. Uh, camera offset. I've got some offset. I don't know if I've put that on. I don't think I have. I just came with it. I've got a cap. My positioning is all. I don't think you need that these days with the software. Uh, output. You can remap the outputs. Um, AR. I've inverted the yaw, pitch, and roll, but not the X, Y, and the Z. I've got none of these ticked. I've got some filtering going on here on the smoothing, rotation sensitivity and those things. That's it. Um, what else can I say? I hope you have success with it. Um, I'll be hoping to do some more tutorials soon. So anyway, guys and gals, thanks for watching. Give a like if you have liked it, if it's been useful to you. And I'll catch you all next time. Crunchy signing off now with his poorly voice. Bye for now.